Welcome back to another session of Domains 21. I'm Jim Groom with Reclaim Hosting, and I have a special privilege of introducing to you two old dear friends who I spent time with in the trenches at the City University of New York, the Graduate Center. And they're here today to talk about some of their work linked to the City University of New York at the Graduate Center, but also with Cast Iron Coating. And this is Zach Davis from Cast Iron Coating and Matt Gold from the City University of New York Graduate Center. Welcome to you both. Thank you so Thanks, much. Jim. We're here to talk about an application uh, that you all have kind of worked together as a kind of university and a development house in Portland to build um, called Manifold. Can you tell us a little bit about the application Manifold and how it got started and why? Sure, maybe Zach, I'll, I'll take a shot at this. Um, yeah. First of all, I want to uh, say that our, um, our third partner is the University of Minnesota Press and Manifold is a result of this collaboration between the University Press, uh, Digital Humanities Center at CUNY Grad Center and uh, development agency, Cast Iron Coding. Um, we really began, um, the story of Manifold uh, kind of begins in 2012 when Debates in the Digital Humanities was published um, as a printed text with the University of Minnesota Press. Um, and at the time, the press uh, very generously agreed to publish the text open access. Um, and it was kind of unclear what that what it would look like when we publish it open access. And um, at the time, you know, I had ambitions not just to, you know, put up a PDF and the press was willing uh, to support that and they were excited about it. And CUNY Grad Center was also excited about it and willing to support it. Um, so, uh, my team worked with uh, with Zach at Cast Iron Coding to create an interactive uh, website reading platform, basically for the debates uh, book. Um, and it was cool when people liked it and used it and had you know thousands of annotations and comments on it. And we would often get queries, people asking like, well, can I publish my own book on it? Um, and unfortunately, you know, although it was open source, it was not a platform that anyone could use. There was no, you know, dashboard or no user interface that people could really uh, explore. Um, and in, I think 2015, uh, the, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation put out a call to university presses asking them for grant proposals related to the future of the digital scholarly monograph. Um, and at that time, Minnesota um, and the CUNY Grad Center and Cast Iron Coding put in this proposal to create Manifold to turn that uh, debate site into a platform. Um, and our, our initial thought was that we would really um, aim the platform towards uh, academic publishers. That was our one of the first things we did was sort of think about who's the audience for this, who's going to use it. And our answer primarily was was university presses and publishers. Um, and we've had a really great kind of track record of success so far in getting publishers involved. But one of the most interesting things over um, the course of the five or so years we've been developing Manifold is that it's expanded in many ways and in ways we didn't initially expect, uh, primarily recently through the growth of OER publishing through Manifold, which has brought a whole new set of kind of questions and, um, and issues to, to Manifold. You started very focused on university presses and the idea of creating a monograph. How did the actual application start to kind of move beyond, say, the single monograph to an anthology using Manifold, bringing in various texts into their English, I think, 302 course? And so like, how did it evolve from a single text for a publishing house to in some ways uh, a reusable tool, which obviously makes the jump to open educational resources? One of the kind of key concepts in the, uh, the grant proposal that we wrote for Mellon was this idea of the iterative monograph. So we wanted to, um, while we were building this platform for you know, the university presses to publish books, um, one of the things we wanted to accomplish was to make it so that the, an author could show kind of the process of authoring the book or, or potentially uh, augment the book with um, additional content that couldn't make it into the, the print edition. So like from the beginning, we had this concept where at the, or we had this idea where the heart of Manifold wasn't 
the book, but the project or the book project itself. Um, and a project could have many texts and many resources um, and different kinds of content attached to it. So because we had that kind of like show your work iterative idea built into Manifold, I think it was pretty easy to make the transition to OER use cases where, you know, we already had this container of the project that could could include different um, different texts, different kinds of content. You know, the, if you if you think about the model of a of a university press and the model, the way we're using it at CUNY, the way you're using Manifold at CUNY, it's just very different. For a university press, they're focused on quality. You know, they have quality controls. They're basically the people using the platform. Uh, turns out to be the staff of the press because they want to make sure that what they're publishing on the press um, reflects the the standard of quality that they. Um, are publishing in their printed books. And so, you know, it's a much more circumscribed kind of use of the platform um, and uh, just a different kind of model. Whereas at CUNY, when we created an instance of Manifold for CUNY, we kind of threw the doors wide open to students and faculty and invited the kind of the, 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 the mass of, of CUNY faculty and grad students to, and, and undergrad students to start playing with it. So that kind of, in some ways, changed the very model of what happens to the platform in part because we invited so many different people into the back end that it became more of a community platform and people started. And one of the things that happens when you do that, as, as you know, you both know from working with open platforms is people start using it and they start surprising you with their use of it. So, you know, we, we kind of had expected, I think uh, the first use case we imagined was, okay, someone's gonna wanna teach a class and ingest a text into Manifold and, you know, have students comment on it during the semester. Maybe they teach a public domain text or something like that. Um, and that was kind of what we expected and that's happening and that's been amazing. We have examples of faculty collaborating across multiple institutions with their students kind of meeting in the, in the, in the text on a shared text and that's been great. But we've also seen some use cases emerge that we didn't expect, like faculty using Manifold as a kind of home for student-generated publications. So maybe instead of writing a final paper for the course, the students engage in a kind of collaborative publishing experiment um, and put that together as what ends up being a kind of final course project. Um, I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the examples of that that I saw yesterday that I was blown away by was Kathy Davidson's recipe book that students created recipes and then they built that as part of their experience. Of okay, so this is We Eat, a student-centered cookbook, and this um, emerged um, from a class uh, at the at the grad center. Um, and um, you can see that this is, by the way, what a Manifold project looks. And this is, this is one of the nice things about using Manifold for like st a student publication is that, you know, this looks like a professional publication and it was really kind of a class project. And it, you can see here under the, um, under the home uh, hero section, it can pull in tweets and other related content related to the project. So it really, one aspect of Manifold is that it really embeds the text within the uh, larger social media landscape. Um, and then you can kind of go through and, um, you know, read read the text. And when you when you jump into the text, um, you can uh, it's, you can see that this is a class offered by um, Kathy Davidson and Eduardo Viana. Um, and, you know, you can start annotating it. Um, so one of the nice things about Manifold is how interactive it is, how easy it is to kind of change the way um, it looks and feels. Um, and, you know, this is all because we want the text to be responsive to the to the browser. And what's just so cool for, for students is that um, they're able to kind of pull something like this together where they're pulling together stories and ingredients and um, into a professional looking uh, uh, publication um, that that is can can involve uh, sound files, audio files, um, and it's all kind of responsive in the in the browser. I think this, um, like, you know, Matt's point about trying things out at CUNY is a really good one because you get to kind of see at at scale how people use the platform, and and I and that's been hugely useful for thinking about Manifold as an OER platform. I also just want to like kind of touch briefly on how generative um this partnership like the tension in this partnership between um like you know matt's team and their kind of focus on oer and classroom use cases for manifold and then this you know respected uh, academic 
press, right, a publisher and their focus on, you know, publisher use cases. And just like, I mean, there's always this tension in this project because we're trying to build a tool for both of these audiences that, that don't always have the same motivations. Um, but I think it gets us to like a really kind of a special place. Like we end up building a, a publishing platform. It kind of keeps us from turning it into like an LMS of some kind, you know, um, and puts the focus on like presenting, you know, coming up with like a beautiful presentation of student and faculty work. But it also like the OER side kind of keeps us uh, on our feet and keeps us creative as a publishing platform, like keeping things open and keeping things iterative. Um, I think that's a really special quality of this project. I agree. And interesting, one of the things I really, doing a deep dive into the interface, because as you may or may not know, you can install this app on Reclaim Cloud using a guide we have. And I think that's a sign that it's an open source project. It's freely available for folks to play with. And one of the cool things I realized is just how many different, how would we say objects almost mm -hmm. you can. So you do have the book as one and you have the annotation and then you start to have things like reading groups around that. And that's super interesting. I'd love to hear more about that. But then you also have resources, you know, um, embeddable videos, um, stuff linking out to LibriVox or other resources. And so the actual, the, the book almost becomes a microsite of a relationship a group of people might have with a text and really captures that. And I love the way in which it, it, it focuses on the book, but then it brings the web in to almost yeah. surround that shared object of desire. So talk a little bit about your thinking around that. And then I'm, because of who I am, I'm very interested on the tech that got you there and how and Max you kind of enabled this to happen and what the development process has been like and where are you and where you're going. Yeah, I mean, you know, we. I think from my perspective, um, as we kind of conceived and architected the system, I, I tend to think about it in terms of, of building blocks, right? So like we have the project as this content container and then we provide uh, building blocks like content blocks or text or chapters of text, different kinds of resources, et cetera, um, that, that people can combine or users can combine in, in you know, flexible and creative ways to, to support a bunch of different kinds of projects. So we try not to dictate what you can do on Manifold um, so much as provide the pieces so people can be creative. And so, you know, we've seen it used for anthologies or like essentially like a class reader. Um, we've seen people uh, put journals on it. And, and sometimes we'll, we'll see cases where like the building blocks aren't quite sufficient. I think journals is a good example. They have um, some specific uh, structure and metadata requirements. So we'll, we'll grow the platform to support that. Um, and, you know, also in terms of that kind of concept of building blocks comes into play in terms of what you can ingest into Manifold. So, you know, while we started with the EPUB because we thought we were building this, you know, publishing platform primarily for academic presses who all had EPUBs. And in fact, we found out many of them don't. Um, you know, that, that led us to like build new ingestion strategies to ingest other kinds of content. So, you know, Markdown or Google Docs or Word Docs or HTML or different combinations of these things. Um, and so, you know, we just keep trying to stay in a place, I think, where we're not dictating the shape of the content too much that people put on Manifold. And, and just to talk a little bit about reading groups, I, I think that's one of the most exciting features that we've added, um, you know, it kind of allows a group of people to have a collective reading experience that can be public or private. Um, and it, it sort of, you know, it shows the evolution of the platform as well. Um, you know, we recently received a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities um, Office of Digital Humanities, which is enabling us to add all sorts of new OER related features. And one of the things that we're doing there is kind of uh, creating a space within Manifold that allows people to build a kind of course uh, space where it's built through the kind of reading group interface. So you, you invite a collection, a collection of people um, to the reading group and then you kind of add text to it that may be present on the platform. Um, and then the students can kind of uh, read with each other and stuff like that. So one of the things too, as you're talking about that, um, that I'm pretty interested in around Manifold is that ingestion process. Like one of the things is I saw yesterday, I was looking at 
some of the beautiful um, EPUBs that were on the site that was called um, uh, standard standard ebooks site. standard ebooks right which where they yeah. came in and they really did look like a penguin edition where you would pull it in and it was just but then also that it can grab all the Gutenberg texts right like so if you go to the old school UVA site I think that's where it began it's kind of one of the earliest kind of moments of open education which I like about that it links back to them and I'm sure it has issues given its its age but the fact is you can pull in like Melville's Bartleby or Benito Serino, or if you're doing an early American lit class, a lot of those texts can really be pulled together pretty seamlessly as an anthology and kind of shown that like your students are doing a lot of the work on the actual text site or the microsite that is manifold. And so do you have universities using that to kind of start imagining like, here's one platform for teaching and rather than saying it has to be within the LMS or we're going to embed it within the LMS, like I can imagine Manifold be a place where a whole class might teach, a, lit or a whole literature class, for example, might teach their work. Yeah, I mean, we've it, it's been one of the coolest things about Manifold, I think, is that it opens up this possibility of uh, kind of collective reading experiences. So one of the things that has happened at, at um, CUNY and also at, at the University of Washington is that, um, you know, at CUNY, we have something called CUNY Student Editions, which is a graduate student created project uh, created by Paul Hebert, Jason Nielsen, and Christina Katapotis, where what they've done is they've taken um, uh, standard ebooks uh, and then edited them and sort of created rich editions of these texts and then um, shared them on the CUNY instance so that multiple classes can, can use them. So we definitely have faculty across the system pulling in existing EPUBs and existing Creative Commons license texts and teaching them openly. Um, but we also have people doing kind of interesting, creating basically critical editions. So, um, you know, uh, edited and commented uh, editions that can be used across classes. You don't necessarily like have to start with an EPUB too. I mean, I, I suspect, for example, that cookbook probably was like a collection of Google Docs or Word Docs that yes. where you know the someone in the class made a, a YAML manifest file, which is essentially like a YAML table of contents that pulls in all these documents that people are editing as individuals into this like you know whole anthology that that can be published on Manifold. So we tried to give like low technical entry points into Manifold too. One of the things you're pointing to there is everybody does their own work on Google Docs, which you know right. is accessible to most folks. This isn't a tool you have to learn or teach too much. You learn, you do it there, you come up with a list that someone edits, right? Well, you know, call it a YAML <laughs> file, call it just a table of contents, pull it in, <laughs> yeah. and then there you have your anthology. And yeah. I've been really blown away about the way that Manifold actually imports, ingests, as you call it. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the parts of Manifold that I'm kind of proudest of from a development standpoint. I mean, there's a whole, like I'll, I won't go into too much technical detail, but there, it's got this ingestion service in it and we've created what we call um, strategies for ingestion. And so it's kind of this extensible foundation in Manifold. And, you know, we write a strategy for EPUBs or for the manifest file or whatever. Um, and it, we could, you know, anybody who wants to kind of like get get into Manifold and contribute could also write additional strategies. So we've looked at like, you know, can we, or, or how much would it take to ingest, you know, like a TEI document or LaTeX or some of these other formats that, that scholars are working in. And like we have, we have such a good foundation to add those additional strategies to Manifold. And then essentially what Manifold does is it, it takes that content in, puts it through the strategy and then normalizes it and stores it locally so it can be presented in the Manifold reader and annotated. And, and importantly, so that it can be output as an EPUB uh, on the other side. So whatever format it comes in, it all gets normalized in Manifold and then can be written to EPUB. Yeah, and one thing I love is like when you have that situation that you described, Jim, where it's like, you know, a bunch of Google Docs, or you could mix up, you know, Google Docs and Word files or whatever, Manifold just like knits everything together and it winds up looking 
you know, like just a beautiful uh, publication with a, with a nice table of contents and that could immediately be um, annotated and, um, and have resources added to it. So uh, Zach has done an incredible job. And it, one of the things I love about the ingestion is that when it sort of shows the processes running. So like when you ingest an EPUB, you're watching for like, you know, 10 seconds as like it runs all the right. commands and then bam, you've got, you've got a, a publication out there on the web. So it's super quick and easy to go from like an EPUB file or a Google doc into a manifold publication. No, oh, I was, I haven't read, are you taking recommendations? Cause I <laughs> yes. have <one. laughs> yeah. It would be really cool given the whole ingestion thing. If you like, you had a, like a, a visualization of the text going into someone's <laughs> mouth and it x-rayed it going down into the esophagus <laughs> and then the stomach, everything's happening. But we won't finish that. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I often don't associate the OER with a certain amount of kind of like consistency of, of aesthetic and like really that sense that, you know, a lot of us who kind of, you know, were born on the book, right, have that sense of the typesetting, have that sense yeah. of the aesthetic. And one of the things I really dig about Manifold is it kind of brings that back. And I guess that has a lot to do with you both starting out as a pub with publishing houses and then moving to more general academic course based or let's say reader group based and then OER. Um, that kind of almost helped you because the aesthetic came first and now the functionality can be built on for just about any group of community. Is that is that fair? It's kind I mean, of. I mean, yeah. I think it's more our process for development here than than the fact that we started with um, you know press publication use cases. I mean, the the problem. I mean, this. I'm going to not rant here. So the the issue is that a lot of academic software projects, uh, in my view, don't take design, both user experience design and visual design, and marketing and branding as. Um, as seriously as they ought to. So on Manifold, we like we threw real resources at this part of the project. And we're, you know, from day one, we were doing, um, you know, like thinking about like, what's our elevator pitch for Manifold? Like, how do we get this down to a sentence? What's our brand look like? Um, you know, what what is like, how do we design a reading experience that's gonna make people wanna actually read something on the web you know we're competing with like the the physical book this wonderful artifact that that is a pleasure to interact with like how do we get cl as close to that as we can in the browser and so we spend a, a lot of money on on ux design and visual design and we do it every point like design kind of leads the whole process before we start developing a feature you know we're not just like shoehorning it into what we already have in manifold we're doing you know three to five rounds of of design and, and review and feedback cycles with stakeholders yeah i mean i i feel so lucky to be working um, with both the, the University of Minnesota Press and um, with with Cast Iron Coding on this project. Zach's team does incredible work. Um, you know, Lael Tyler, our, our lead designer, does incredible design for us. And, um, you know, it's, as Zach says, we take it seriously from the beginning. And, you know, the aesthetics of the platform, I do think, kind of set it apart. Um, and the other thing is that we're we're focused on the aesthetics, but we're also thinking about, say, you know, issues of accessibility. We've been working very closely with the University of Washington um, on their accessible with their uh, library and accessible IT uh, groups to uh, test manifold, both ma uh, manual testing and then automated testing uh, that Cast Iron does in its design process. So. Um, it's, it's, there are many stages to our work and, um, you know, we've really, in addition to the, the design process that Zach, uh, stated, you know, we've also been trying to be open about our development process all the way through. So, you know, we're, we're constantly, you know, uh, posting stuff to GitHub We're we're trying increasingly to, to do our work and share designs at earlier and earlier stages. Um, and, you know. I do, I do feel really gratified that the uh, the platform kind of looks good and that because you, you want you want it to look good. If people are going to want to read books on a platform, it has to kind of look and feel uh, nice to use. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I, re I really do. I think it's a gorgeous platform and I really do hope other folks play with it. I'm going to include a link here uh, before we go just so people can go to the site. I heard and I don't know if this is true or if I'm giving anything away. But I heard there's a redesign of the site coming. 
So there is, I am yeah. Look, there is. Looking forward to that. I might have even gotten a sneak peek, and I was <laughs> blown away. So, listen, I want to thank you both for coming uh, to Domains 21 and to sharing with us um, your yeah, work with Manifold, which I think is inspirational. And just I look forward to the reading groups. I, I think something really hit for me when you started to think about it, not trying to reproduce the LMS, the course-based idea, but the idea of the shared experience around the text mm -hmm. and where that leads. I think it's it's a nice dis distinction. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's to be honest, that's a lesson I learned from you, Jim, you know, early on. I mean, the we started the CUNY Academic Commons at the Grad Center based in part on the work you were doing at, at UMW on UMW blogs. And, you know, the thing I noticed about and this goes back to the time when the three of us were kind of all together as grad students is like thinking about these spaces, not just as, you know, publishing platforms, but as community spaces. These are these are places where people gather, whether it's to read, whether it's to share, mm -hmm. to publish. And you have to think about like the, the people there. And that's, you know, that's a lesson kind of CUNY has taught me. And um, also that, you know, I've, I've learned from you as well. Words of wisdom, Lloyd. <laughs> Words of wisdom. And with that, we have to stop. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks, Jim. Bye. Thanks, thank man. you. Mm -hmm. Nom nom nom.